What's up, Chanel? And welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today's video, if you are a patron, is brought to you by you for being amazing. And we're going to be going over one of my favorite Gore Grind releases and one of my favorite Exhumed records, the sophomore full length. Slaughter Cult. Now, no raw sewage, but holy shit. What a banger. And I cursed in under a minute. Darn. But, like, these promo photos. Like, I remember when I first saw them. Like, compared to gore metal and stuff, like, the story behind gore metal and, like, the kitchen, it's great. I, I love stuff that has, like, a backstory to it. But I always liked these promo photos. I, I just thought they were sick. I, I don't know. But compared to these one, <laughs> the these one. Compared to these, oh my goodness. Hopefully, Matt didn't get E. coli. I know somebody got, got, got E. coli on one of the exhumed photo shoots. I forget who it was. It might have been raw sewage on Gore Metal. Whoever's biting, uh... They have, like, a gauntlet with, like, a piece of, like, raw meat on it, I think, and they're, like, biting it. Whoever that was got really sick, from what I remember in the, in the documentary. But, uh, anyways, Slaughter Cult, this is really limited when it comes to an exhumed release from Relapse. Uh... Milky Clear with Splatter Edition, limited to 1,500 copies. Now, I don't know if this got a black vinyl release, but, like, if that's all that got pressed here, yo, get on this, because you're going to be like, like... Like, it's like me with gore metal. Every time I go to get... And we went over, like, I think I reviewed the CD on here, oh, like the original CD, a long time ago, just because I didn't have the LP version. And it was one of those releases, like, at the time, nobody was reissuing it, and it was just like, I'm not paying $70 for this record. So, when I saw that it was reissued, it was on the Patreon picks list, along with Anatomy is Destiny, but people also wanted some Infest Dead, and also they said, yo, just place a Hell's Headbangers order, it's on you, but I had some other, like, you should grab some more Exhumed, so, yeah, I did, and as much as I wanted to get Gore Metal, I am more than happy to have Slaughter Cult. It's just such a fun slab of gore metal. Like, it's gore grind, but not as much as, like, the Hemdale split, the demos, and gore metal. It's a lot more death metal oriented, and I love it. Because when they go into, like, the carcass worship parts, there's a lot more, like, variety. And what I mean by that is, it's not just Reek of Putrefaction and Symphonies, where normally, that's all I fucking want. And if you throw some necroticism parts on there, cool. But, like, there's some, like, solos on here that straight up, it's like, like, dude, that's, like, heart work. You know, like, talent-wise, 
like the guitar work on here. I'm not a guitar player, but like I know when it's like, yo, like that riff is sick as shit. Like I know for like certain, especially like I love the solos on every Exhumed like record. Whenever Exhumed throw like a solo in, it never feels like ah we have. 15 seconds here, what do we do? Let's just throw a solo in. Nah. Every solo, like... Wait. Hold on one second. Okay, it's not like, uh... For some reason, I was just checking. I, I like how certain certain bands, like, name their guitar solos. I think that's just cool as shit. And I know my beard is crooked. I'm sorry. But, uh... Yeah, I was just checking real fast. I, I forgot. Because, again, I haven't owned this in a very long time. I probably have not owned this physically since 2008. Yeah. Probably, yeah, probably 2008, I would say. So, hails the Hell's Headbangers for carrying this, because otherwise I would have definitely not been able to get it. I don't order from Relapse, because all my, they always, I, there's always a problem, and I'm not getting into it, but what we have here is a pure example of gore metal Again, you it, yeah, gore grind, gore metal, whatever you want to call it, as long as the word gore is in it. But there's some people that I know, they're like, Exhumed is a death metal band, that's it, the end. Okay, I'm not, <laughs> it's your opinion, I'm not going to argue your opinion, unless it's something, you know, stupid. Uh, but we have... Like, it's so hard to pick a favorite track off this record, but Slave to the Casket, Funeral Fuck. If you don't like Funeral Fuck, I don't think you like Exhumed. Legit, it's one of those songs where I'm just like, fuck yeah. Like, everything about it is so sick. Decrepit, Crescendo, Forged in Fire, Formed in Flame. A Lesson in Pathology, so good. This axe was made to grind. Carnal Epitaph. Come on. Dinner Time in the Morgue. That's on side gore. And on side metal. Fester Forever. Deep Red. Infester. Slave to the Casket. Slaughter Cult. Funeral Fuck. Into Vacant Grave. Wait, where's my... Ah, shit. That's a embalmer set list. No. No, I have a, I have a exhumed set list. I don't know where it is. I, deceased, Crip Sermon. Oh, it's behind the, oh, okay. It, okay, it is up there though. I'm sorry. I should have got it down. Cause I was going to say, let's see what songs from Slaughter Cult are on that set list, because I, I forget, but I'm sure Funeral Fuck's on there, and like, Vacant Grave, but I'm not positive, because they were, the set list I have is from the Death Revenge Tour, and then I got one a long time ago when Anatomy is Destiny came out. Uh, They had like the drummer from Uphill Battle? Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. He was in this, like... Oh, my goodness. I don't believe I'm drawing a blank here. Uh, short hair. If you have Anatomy as Destiny, you know who I'm talking about. He was in Uphill Battle also, but he plays on Anatomy as Destiny. And he went on to form this, like... Isis, this like Nur Isis type band, Infer not, 
It's not infer. It's something like that. I don't know why I'm drawing a goddamn blank. But, like, I just remember being like, wait, that dude was in Exhumed. And now he's in this, like, Neurisis-type band. And, like, because Uphill Battle used to be this band on Relapse. And I always thought they were very underrated and sick. Kind of like Soylent Green, where I feel like if Uphill Battle was to, like... See, I don't even know if they ever broke up, but, like, if Uphill Battle was to, like, get put on, like, MDF, some people would be like, yo, like, that's sick. Because, like, dude, I didn't even know, like, Wake was still a band. Until I watched, uh, the Nathan, uh, Big Riff Energy... Nathan from X Gate Creeper and Spirit Adrift. I watched his, uh, I think he was talking about typo negative or something. I honestly forget, but, uh, that dude's got a cool channel if you want to check out stuff about, like, riffs. Because, like, you know, he goes into, you know, like, Mastodon remission and shit that... I know some of you are like Mastodon. I'm not. I'm not listening to Mastodon. Still the sickest Mastodon shirt. I regret buying. I regret not buying. I mean, it just said Mastodon, and I had to do a, a giant dong. It was. I just thought it was hilarious, and I had backstage passes. I've told this story before. It was the first time Mastodon was touring with Slayer. So, it was just a big deal for me to even be backstage. Let alone, like, I my all-access pass used to be right here. Like, it, Slayer, uh, like, you know, the fucking shit from, like, Wayne's World. Where, like, you know, like, backstage. <laughs> that's, that's how I felt. Like, I'm, like, walking around, like, and, dude... This is back when I used to party. I, I was 19. I wasn't even old enough to drink. We're drinking with the fucking lizard man. The guy that with like all the tattoos and the split tongue. And yeah, it was just a good time. But what does it have to do with Exhumed? A good time. If you're going to see Exhumed live, yeah, prepare for some fucking fun. It's gonna be a, like, I have never seen Exhumed even put on a mediocre set. They always have sick, like, and it's the same with, like, Ghoul. I've never seen Impaled live, but, like, just Exhumed have such a good stage show. Like, with horror, having, like, all these televisions playing, like, splatter clips I thought it was so fucking cool. And then with Death Funeral, they had like these giant coffins. I'm caskets, my bad, not coffin. Yeah, same fucking thing. See? I'm an idiot sometimes. I hate it. But their stage setup is always on point, I think. Especially now that they're a lot bigger than they used to be. Because uh, I'm trying to remember. Again, it, it's covered somewhere. I know that Exhumed Anatomy is Destiny. Like, Relapse Showcase Flyers somewhere. Because that's what it was. Like, I'm pretty sure it was like a Relapse Showcase. I'm, I'm, like, right here, I know you can't, I've pulled it down before, like, Cannibal Corpse and Hypocrisy Meet and Greet, like, for, for, and this shit was free, you would just go to the Relapse Retail Store, and here, oh, wait, I put fresh tape on this shit, I don't want to rip it, but, Sorry, it, it's right here, though. Cannibal Corpse and Hypocrisy, Sunday, March 7th, in-store meet and greet, 4 p.m. And, uh, if you know, you know what this is. Oh, yeah. Blood Incantation, demo number two. If 
If you don't know, now you know. But, uh, yeah, when it comes to Exhumed, Slaughter Cult, like, gore metal, Slaughter Cult, horror, anatomy is destiny. That's how I would listen to Exhumed. But, if I'm going to count the Hemdale split, it's going to go... In the name of gore material from the Hemdale split, gore metal, then slaughter cult, then anatomy is destiny, then horror. Yeah, that, that's how I would suggest listening to Exhumed. They have a couple albums in between where I'm just like, you know, <laughs> it's it's okay. Like the one with like, it's like necropol necropolis. I don't know. It like looks like a fucking communist thing. I have no idea. <laughs> but like, it, I guess it's like a political. I I have no. It's it's one of those records. I honestly kind of just went like over my head at the time. Like I was kind of just like another exhumed record. It was one of those. Like I was just being kind of a asshole. Like, uh, another Exhumed record, like, it's not gonna be as good as, but then, like, you know, I really liked Death Revenge, even though it was, like, very different. But, like, I loved the whole concept and everything. I thought it was cool as shit. But, to me, you can't go wrong with the early shit. And I hate sounding like that guy, but, like, I even like the fucking demos. Like, I, go watch my review of the demo. But, uh... Um... Uh, Excruciating Innards. The 7-inch. I reviewed it a couple years ago. But, Slaughter Cult... This is one I've been... Like... I legit thought I was getting the Hells reissue with the rehearsal C and D. Well, I think it might just be a seaside rehearsal. But with the fucking actual saw blade cut. And like, you know, the tunes are in the grooves. I just, it's a cool gimmick. Like, they did it with like Mortician... I miss those as well, and then when Relapse does the fucking Mortician reissues, like, I don't, as long as I have the tunes, I'm happy. So, thank you, Hell's Headbangers, because for one, it took two days. Like, one of the fastest orders I've ever placed. So, thank you. And, like, I have something coming from Tampa today which has to be from Caligari, which, again, I, I don't know how this happened, but it shipped yesterday and is out for delivery today. I'm just like, whoa, like, cool. Like, awesome. And uh, the tank crime stuff is out for delivery as well. So, yo, sick shit. So we're going to have another unboxing video. So I just decided, I was like, I want to talk about how sick Exhumed is on Slaughter Cult. Yes, it's still riddled with gore, but I wouldn't call it a straight gore grind record. I would call it more gore riddled death metal. And it's just fucking awesome. I, I just love everything about it. I know some people, uh, it's just another carcass clone. You're a little, you're kind of, you're, you're dead wrong, actually. But, uh, yeah. Exhumed Slaughter Cult. Some E-fucking-sensual, gore-soaked death metal. Again, I, I'm kind of confused with how limited this reissue is. Because I assume, you know... Again, I brought this up a couple of days ago. Like, for example, if I'm exhumed right now, I know they have all those new reissues. 
like from relapse. So I would, first off, the Hemdale split is fucking 100% essential. You, If you're a fan of Exhumed, like, these two should be in your life in some way, shape, or form. But if I was Exhumed touring, like, right now, I dude, you're going to make a killing off LPs. Just as much as, like, probably not as much as t-shirts, but there's such a good amount of Exhumed reissues right now that... Yeah, if you're a fan, you are stoked. Because, like, I, this, this is legit probably, like I said, aside from Gore Metal, which is a full length, this is my favorite Exhumed material. It might, but if, if it's not a full length, though, like, if we're going off splits, this might legit be number one. And... Horrendous member dismemberment. <laughs> there, there's just it's just a like bone fucker. Like, such a banger, and even the possessed cover of death metal. Like hell, you you need. You, I'll read you the hype sticker because here's another thing though. When this sells out, do not again. This is another one. If it sells out, I don't know when it's gonna get reissued again. Because I think this might be the first time this ever even is available on vinyl. Absolute classic of 90s gore grind insanity finally available on vinyl. Yep. Originally released in 1996 but only on CD. This split features 24 tracks across 53 minutes. When Hemdale was one of the cultist names in the scene and Exhumed were pure gore grind. In the name of gore indeed. So, I consider this essential. Gore metal, essential. Slaughter cult, essential. Anatomy is destiny, essential. All guts, all glory? Is that, is that it? It's a good one. But, the, the one with the, it's a red cover. And it's like necro something. That record, maybe I need to re listen to it. But I just remember being like, like even the cover art, I just was like, huh, I don't know. I'm used to this. So when I saw like a kind of like a drawing, I was just like, Huh. Again, I don't even remember what year this was, but, like, look at the cover of Anatomy is Destiny. And then go look at the cover of the album I'm talking about. Because I don't remember the name. I just know it starts with an N. And has Necro in it. Like, the, the name Necro. I think it's, like, Necropolis, but I, I'm not fucking positive. But anyways, listen to Exhumed. Especially the early shit, because... You can't go wrong here, especially with raw sewage. But don't get me wrong, like, this lineup is just as sick, but Ross is one of a kind. Yeah, I'm, I'm a raw sewage fan, if you haven't noticed. Music by Matt Harvey, lyrics by uh, Harvey and Jones. Uh... So, Matt Harvey on Gorsaw and Death Throat. Mike Beams. The legendary Mike Beams on Electric Extras. Uh, electric. Oh my goodness. Do not tell me I can no longer pronounce this word. Exorc okay, Exorcism. And Ribcage Rupture. And Cole Jones, Corpse Blaster. Uh, uh, this was put to, this is recorded May 9th, 2000, uh, yeah, pretty sweet, 
Exhumed offers absolutely no apologies and still gives no fucking thanks. Hell yeah. Every time I see Matt, too, like, I want to, like, just, like, talk to him, but I, I never, I never do. Like, he'll always walk by me, and I'll just be like, like, I want to say, like, yo, Matt, but I never do, but now, I got some shit I want signed, so next time I see Matt, I'm gonna have to get him to sign some stuff, and... Like, uh, like when I saw Ghoul, couple, uh, like last month or the month before, I don't know if I had a copy of this yet, but I should have got this signed by Ross. Damn, I wasn't even thinking, but I don't think I had this at that show yet, so I'm not positive. Anyways, Exum Slaughter Cult 2000. Gore-soaked death metal. During some of re the relapse glory days of the early 2000s. They, didn't re they weren't really, you know, going down, like, the super weird route yet. Like, they had success with the Dillinger escape plan, obviously. And that opened up the floodgates. And then, same with Mastodon. And then especially once... Everyone heard Mastodon's Leviathan and Dillinger Escape Plan's Miss Machine. It was like, oh, I have a feeling things are going to change for this label. And oh, yeah, shit got like really professional and serious and, you know, good for all those bands that got to enjoy like the success of those two releases because without those two releases there was a time period where relapse was just signing band like just bands just boom 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 and a lot of the times you'd be like oh like i saw that band live once they were awesome and then they'd put out a record and it'd be like What the fuck is this? Like this, is, this isn't this. This can't be the same band. And then like, there's still some records where I'm like, how the hell did this get a relapse release outside of the fact these people work at the old warehouse? I'm not gonna name the band because I liked that band, but. It was one of those things, like, the production was very, you could tell, it was, they, they, they should have, like, maybe re-recorded it and made it a little, but I think they wanted it to be, like, kind of raw, and as Skeleton Proof Tanks was part of the Philly Thrash Brigade, even though we weren't a thrash metal band, I just thought, like, I would represent the shirt sometimes, and... We had more of a connection with New York, with MYDM. Like, uh, I'm not going to go into it. You can look into the whole Will Romer Europe situation. But, like, a little bit before that, I was always talking to, like, MYDM people. And if you don't, like, I'm talking about the, like, the organization and stuff. Like, my friend Ron, I think he's, like, he's, like, a president or something. I'm not, not really positive. But, uh, anyways, this one dude, Roger, what's his name? Not Roger from Mortician, just his name was Roger. And he lived in Yonkers. And he booked us with, uh, Skinless. And I remember being like, yo, like, cause, like, that was, like, my drummer's favorite band at the time, Skinless. And a band called Fecal Corpse. And uh, we were co-headlining. And I remember being like, ooh, like, we gotta, like, we gotta kill it. And I just remember being like, like, calling the Roger dude that booked the show from, like, a fucking payphone. And, uh, I was like, uh, cause I, I 
the directions were like kind of weird. This was way before GPS and shit. So like, you know, you're reading directions off like a piece of paper from cop like, from MapQuest or some shit. So I, I called the dude and I just was like, hey, is Will Romer there? And he was like, yeah. I was like, no fucking way. Like, serious? And, dude, like, I, I remember, like, going up the wheel and being like, yo, like, we're playing tonight. Like, we wouldn't be here without you. Like, seriously. Like, we love Mortician. And this was when it was not cool to like Mortician. So he was all like, oh, like, fucking that's sick. Like, he legit was, like, stoked that, you know, these young kids at the time, like, I was, like, 20. I might have been 21. I'm not sure. But, like, I just remember being, like, in the picture, I'm wearing a necrophagist hoodie. I know that for a fact. And so, and I have camo pants on. I might even have camo shorts on. Because we were on, like, a little, like, See, this is back in the day. You're playing a venue and it gets hot. You just would take your shirt off and who gives a fuck? But I would take my shirt off and fuck. You know, kind of. Yeah. And I'm not allowed to say because it's YouTube, but you, you know, sometimes I'd be bleeding a little bit after. Just sometimes you gotta, like, just win the crowd over with something fun like that. Just, like, having blood. Like, real blood. But, uh, anyways. Tale for a different day. But, I just remember being, like, legit stoked when meeting Will Romer. Which I know is not that big of a deal. But, like, at the time, we didn't know if what was going to happen with the whole thing in Poland. I think it was Poland. It might have been somewhere else, but I'm pretty positive it was Poland. But that whole situation, it legit was fucked. And I kind of still think that was the end of Mortician. Like, but not really. I mean... Whoever's idea it was to make the meme page, thank you. Seriously, thank you. Because without you, whoever's idea that was to make it that Mortician headlined Maryland Death Fest, like, good job. And thank you. Because I got to see Mortician a couple times where I was like, well... I'm never going to see Mortician again. Like, god damn it. And then next thing you know, it's like, yo, Mortician's playing? Like, sick. And, yeah. It was just funny because, like, you'd go from, like, a Mortician show where there's seriously, like, the bands and, like, six other people. Not being a dick, just that was how it was sometimes. And... Then you go to a mortician show and it's fucking sold out. That's pretty sick. Like, getting that second wind, I think, like, really is awesome. Because Mortician have not put out a new song since uh, Reanimated Dead Flesh, to my knowledge. I think that was the last album. And I agree with Justin. Again, uh... Like, do a Final Bloodbath Sessions Part 2. Like, I, I would think that's a no-brainer. Honestly, like, I'd be all over that shit. Especially if you did a tape and LP release. Oh, fucking A, man. I I regret still not, not grabbing Final Bloodbath on tape. Last time I saw Mortician. It was just 12 bucks and I, I had 11 and I was just like, fuck. Like, it was just a dollar, but I just didn't want to be like, oh, I'm a dollar short. I, I just was like, well, I'll get it later. And I never got it later. <laughs> but I, I, it was, again, it's one of those releases I haven't heard since, like, for, for years. But real quick, 
Again, I'm sorry to exhumed. I, I have said enough about Slaughter Cult. E fucking essential. Gore riddled death metal. Relapse reissue. Hell's Headbangers has copies. Get on that shit. But real quick, this Eternal Champion shirt, Ryan Haley designed, who did the accursed part of my band's logo. One of my bands, BC Lives, is playing the Century on the 30th, but, okay. Now, you see Conan on my shirt, or whoever, this barbar, it's Conan. Even my nephews are like, that's Conan. But, I was looking at my Kill Town Death Fest 2013. Cover and I was like, wait a minute. Like, what? Huh, you see? You see what? I mean, I know it's night and day, but like, because I kept thinking, I was like, dude, like, why has it got this big ass, like, dong thing? But, like, now, I get what it is and stuff, but, like, just where it's placed, it does look like, you know. But, yeah, it's just one of those, like, things I, I just noticed. I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> like, that looks kind of similar. I don't know how I never noticed that before. But, yeah, anyways... Listen to Exhumed Slaughter Cult and enjoy. Thanks for watching as always. You fucking rule. Thanks again to the Patreon for making today's video possible. Infernal hails and gratitude. Peace.